I sent 200,000 cold emails and generated over $4 million in sales pipeline in less than four months. And here are some of the results that we've gotten by doing that. For example, this is how we helped our client generate over $4 million in sales pipeline in 116 days. And this is how we're helping Steven sign three to four new clients per month. Here are some other testimonials and screenshots of campaigns and results and proof that we've actually sent more than 200,000 cold emails over uh, four months. Now, before we dive into how you can send tons of cold emails and generate these kinds of results, let's run through the math on how this could benefit your business specifically. So let's say that you wanna send 200,000 cold emails over four months. That's 50,000 cold emails per month. So let's say you get a reply rate of 4%, to be conservative, that's 2,000 replies per month. Let's assume 10% of these replies are positive. Again, to be conservative, these numbers could be higher or could be lower. Uh, that's roughly 20 positive replies per month. Now, let's say that 25 of them turn into a call. That's 50 calls a month. Now, to be realistic, not all of them will show up and be qualified. So let's assume that you actually talk to 40 qualified prospects per month out of those 50 booked calls. So let's assume your closing rate is 25% you will generate 10 new clients per month. This could mean adding multiple six figures in LTV every month just by running cold email campaigns. So as you can imagine, cold email can be an extremely profitable channel to generate new business in 2024. But at the same time, if you don't know how to do cold email, it can be an additional cost for your business and that does not translate into a positive ROI. So let's dive into exactly what you need to do and to know uh, to make cold email work. Now, let's begin with the sending infrastructure. First of all, you need to set up your cold email sending infrastructure. This means setting and warming up all the domains and the sending accounts that you will need to send cold emails. Now, the biggest mistake I often see in B2B business when it comes to cold email is that they send cold emails from their primary uh, domain, which damages their email reputation and results in emails being flagged as spam and Google restricting their uh, email accounts and them not being able to safely send emails anymore. The result is that all of their emails, so cold emails, internal emails, invoices, and emails to clients will start landing in spam. So if you want your emails to be delivered in the inbox, you need to use outreach domains. However, buying a new uh, outreach domain and starting to send a crazy amount of emails from it is not really viable. So to send a high volume of cold emails per day, it's important that you scale horizontally, and not vertically. And this is pretty much what it means. What I mean by this is that if you send tons of cold emails, from a single mailbox or domain, all your emails are going to be marked as spam. And that's because Google and Microsoft, which are the main email providers, will see an unusual activity coming from your domain. So to safely send such a high volume of emails, you need multiple outreach domains and multiple admin panels so that you're still sending a high volume of emails per day, but the volume per domain is low. That means scaling horizontally. Now let's assume, as in the example above, that you want to send 50,000 cold emails per month. That means roughly 2,272 cold emails per day, assuming you don't send emails during weekends. Now, I recommend not sending more than 25 cold emails per day per sending account. So doing the math, you would need roughly 90 sending accounts. Now, I recommend not setting up more than two sending accounts per outreach domain. So we can simply assume that if you want to send 50,000 cold emails a month, you need 45 domains and 90 sending accounts in total. So outreach domains will be similar domains to your primary company domain. If your company domain is company.com, for example, outreach domains can be getcompany.com, adcompany.co, and ccompany.co.uk, for example. Now, it's important that you don't use different domain suffixes to .com, .co, and .co.uk, because we've seen other domain suffixes to be blacklisted and marked as spam more often. Now, to purchase outreach domains, you can either use Squarespace, Porkman, GoDaddy, or Namecheap. We personally use Porkman as it's the most reliable one that we've seen. When it comes to records, you need to set up the following records on the Irish domains that you purchased for them to be working correctly. We've got the MX, SPF, DKM, and DMARC. So if you buy domains from Google, uh, most of them are already set up. Uh, you can check that all records have been set up correctly with MX Toolbox, which is do this tool right here. Now, when it comes to forwarding domains, Irish domains need to be forwarded to your company domain. This is because by doing that, when prospects will receive a cold email from you, search for your outreach domain in Google, they will be redirected to your company website. If you don't do this, people will be redirected to an empty page uh, and your cold emails are going to be looking very suspicious to them. 
So when it comes to forwarding mailboxes, to respond to leads, you will need to log in every email account whenever you receive a reply. This takes a ton of time and it's not critical at all when uh, you need to sign in 90 different accounts as an example above. Instead, you can handle all of these replies from a single master inbox by forwarding all of these email accounts that you create to a main mailbox. Or, which is what I recommend, you can manage your replies from Smartleads master inbox and Smartlead.ai is a sending platform that we will talk about in a moment. When it comes to warm up and ramp up, um, before you start sending cold emails, you need a warm up period of two to three weeks. In this warm up period, you send and receive automated emails to and from other similar mailboxes that are in the same process of warm up. The goal of this is to emulate human activity and establish trust with email providers such as Google and Outlook. Now, to start a warm up period, you need to add your sending accounts to a sending software that allows you to do a warm up. I recommend Smarty.ai. You can sign up with the link in the description of this video. Now, when it comes to the volume of warm up on each of the mailboxes you set up, you can add the following settings. So, warm up sending volume is 50 emails a day and reply rate 40%. So, after two to three weeks, you can slowly start sending cold emails, making sure to slowly ramp up the cold email sending volume and decrease the warm sending volume as well. So, for example, week one, is going to be 50 warm emails and 10 cold emails. Week two is going to be 45 warm emails and 15 cold emails. And week three is going to be 40 warm emails and 20 cold emails. Now you can wrap up the sending volume until you get to 20 to 25 cold emails a day. I don't recommend sending more than 25 cold emails a day per sending account. Then warm up reply rate should be set at 70 to 90%. So even if you decrease the warm up emails, you're still receiving automated replies they make the email accounts activity look more human uh, to Google and Outlook. This is effectively all you need to do and to know to start sending a high volume of cold emails. Now, before you do that, sending a ton of cold emails will not guarantee you new clients, new book calls, or new business. So you need your cold emails to be actually good, look personalized and provide value, and also ask for something. So let's get onto the fun part. Now, when it comes to the strategy, the strategy is not the cold emails that you send. Uh, this strategy is about brainstorming how you're going to turn an high school prospect into an interested lead ready to get on a sales call with you. And so I see so many people overlook this part, but I think it's the most important thing to consider when creating a cold email campaign. Many people just create a bunch of leads, write some copy, and then launch a campaign hoping that they will get leads and book sales calls. However, this probably used to work in 2018. This year, 2024, this random approach to cold email no longer works and you need to be more sophisticated. And I always like to start by asking myself why prospects should respond to my cold email. And most of the time, the answer is that they actually shouldn't unless they provide some form of value that is relevant to them and relevant to a problem or pain point that they have. Now, with that being said, I'm sure you've heard of a no-brainer offer you should pitch over cold email. Typically, those offers follow this framework. I will get you this result in this time frame with this crazy guarantee with no clear evidence that what I sell will actually work. And so this used to work in 2022 and last year, but does not work as well in 2024. And this is because the market sophisticates and people receive hundreds of similar cold emails in their inbox every week from people using the same cold email templates and no-brainer offer templates that they find online. Therefore, prospects are consequentially less receptive to these types of offers and cold emails. So what worked a year ago does not work anymore as well. What works in 2024 is actually providing a front value and showing clear social proof of why they should believe in your claim, why they should believe in your offer. Essentially giving a reason why a prospect should respond to your cold email instead of the other 20 similar emails that they received this week in their inbox. So we provide a front value by using a lead magnet. And as Alex Sorbos explains it, a lead magnet is a complete solution to a narrow problem. Essentially, you identify a small problem that your target market has, and you solve it for them with the free lead magnet, free solution, free offer. And this allows them to develop the trust in you because you've solved them a problem for them for free that is valuable to them. Now, here are a few examples of lead magnets. For instance, if you are an SEO agency, you could provide a free report of the company's SEO and website to identify issues that can hurt their organic traffic. If you're a solar company, you could provide a free estimate of how much the company that you're reaching out to would reduce their organic bill by installing solar panels. So after you've provided front value in the form of a lead magnet 
you've earned their trust, you can then present your paid offer, which will then help them solve their bigger problem. And here are a few examples of how you can tie your lead magnet to your actual paid offer. If you're an SEO agency, for instance, after you've shown them their website's issues through the free report that you provided, you offer to fix their SEO and increase their organic traffic. If you're a solar company, after you've provided the estimate of their potential energy savings, you offer to take care of the entire solar installation for them. Our important thing to mention here is that nothing has changed about your offer or service. You might still be saying a super commoditized and saturated niche, uh, but still prospects will respond to you because you've proved to be competent in the field. So for example, we now have a client that is selling Facebook ads to e-commerce brands, which is one of the most saturated offers in markets out there. As a result of using a lead magnet, we're booking two to three qualified sales course per week for them. And they are now closing three to four new econ clients every month. Now, once you've outlined the strategy and what you're actually going to offer in your cold email, we can go over how to build a lead list of target prospects and how to write a cold email copy for your campaigns. Now, when it comes to building a lead list, I always start by brainstorming who will be more likely to resonate with my cold email campaign and buy my offer. Typically, who bought the same offer in the past is a good starting point if you have no idea of who your ideal target client is. And from there, I nail down my ICP and define the following details, which will then be useful when building lead list. So industry, employee account, company location, contact location, job title, and maybe some technologies they use. Now, once you've defined all of these details, you can use a list building tool to scrape a list of ideal prospects that match those criteria. There's plenty of list building tools, and here are my favorite ones, which are essentially Apollo.io and LinkedIn Sales Nav. Once you've scraped your lead list, you need to validate the contact details of your leads using a verification tool. Now, this is key to the success of your cold email campaign. Most people overlook this part and end up setting their campaign up for failure. Validating the email addresses of the leads that you're reaching out to is fundamental because most of these list building tools will give you a small percentage of non-verified emails. So those email addresses are emails that have either been deactivated or deleted. So that means that if you send an email to these email addresses, your email is going to result in a bounce. And bounces damage your domain reputation because they appear as irregular activity to Google and Outlook. After all, why would someone send an email to an address that doesn't exist, right? So if you damage your domain reputation, emails sent from that specific domain will start landing in spam more and more often. So it's important, therefore, you keep your bounce rate low and specifically below 1% to 2%. That allows you to keep a healthy uh, domain reputation and deliverability. Now to validate email addresses, I recommend using one of the following tools. You can either use million verifier, better bounce, zero bounce, or bulk email checker. They basically all do the same thing. Some of them are cheaper, some of them are faster. Just pick one and don't overcomplicate it. After validation, you will notice that a significant portion of your lead list has been cut. So to find more valid email addresses out of the same lead list, I recommend using a waterfall enrichment. To do that, you can use other enrichment tools such as find email, drop contact, or snuff.io. So combining these tools will allow you to find more email addresses out of the same lead list effectively expanding the total number of prospects that you can possibly reach out to. Now, every time you use one of these enrichment tools, always remember to validate the email addresses that you find with a verification tool, such as the ones that I mentioned above. Now, after you've done that, you can upload your complete lead list of target prospects to smartly.ai, which is the email setting platform. So when it comes to copy, the good thing about brainstorming a strategy of your cold email campaign first which is what we talked about earlier, is that writing the cold email copy for your campaigns will be so much easier because you already have a clear picture in mind of what you're going to offer and you have a clear understanding of what you're going to say. So I have tons of videos on my channel how to write good cold email copy. Essentially, you want to make sure your email is number one, relevant, show social proof, and includes a clear call to action. So when it comes to being relevant over cold email, when you reach out to a stranger, the first question they will ask is why they receive this email. And so it will take them not more than three seconds to decide if they want to keep reading that email or dragging the email in the spam folder or in the trash. So if you use personalized first lines, such as huge fan of company name or notice your last LinkedIn post, they will immediately understand it's AI written mass personalization. This is because everyone is doing the same thing 
and your prospects are developing a pattern in their brain where if they see a similar email, they will just think it's a mass cold email blast and will mark you as spam, basically. Now, in short, using relevancy is more effective than personalization. To be relevant, we will give prospects a valid reason why we're reaching out to them. And you can make up the reason. That's what makes sense. Otherwise, they will just understand that you did not do your research. Now, the reason can be a pain point or something that you noticed about their company or themselves. For example, I'm reaching out to you uh, since I noticed that you qualify for this government grant that can help you save 75% of your sole investment. We can help you secure a grant, okay? Or I'm reaching out because you notice that you're not using uh, user-generated content in your TikTok marketing strategy. Now, when it comes to social proof, uh, now that they know why you reached out to them and what you offer, they need to decide if they want to trust you or not. And for that reason, social proof is a super important piece of your cold email. You can mention a case study, for example, that shows them why they should trust you and that proves that your service actually works. Now, you have to make the case study relevant. If you're reaching out to fashion brands, use a case study of a fashion brand that you helped in the past. Or if you're talking plum plumbers, you should mention how you helped another plumber, right? Because the more relevant the case study is, the more it's going to uh, resonate with your prospects. Try to make this section as relevant as possible as pretty much the entire cold email. Uh, if you work with dentists in LA, it might be worth creating a campaign targeting only dentists in Los Angeles and measure the results that you got to your past clients. And when it comes to the call to action, finally, you can ask your prospects to take action on the email that you sent them on the offer that you gave them. So I see so many people do it wrong here and they just wonder why their cold email campaign is not working. And the answer is that they're not asking for anything in return or they're not really using a specific call to action and asking for something specific. So you have to make sure that the call to action that you're using is short, clear, and straight to the point and asks for one specific thing. Don't ask for hundreds of different things. Even if you ask two questions, prospects uh, will not know which one to respond to. This just adds friction and increases your reply rate for no real reason. So just ask for the one thing at a time. And as we have mentioned earlier, in the CTA, we're going to offer our lead magnet first to provide value upfront. So people like free stuff, so most of them will take the free stuff and give you something back in return because of the reciprocity rule. So once the prospect responds positively, give them the free lead magnet and make sure to specify what you want back from them after you've provided upfront value. Now, with that being said, cold email is an effective way of generating qualified leads for your business, but it takes a ton of time and a ton of work to make it actually work. So if you've never tried cold email for your business, I recommend you trying for at least three months to see some results, testing different things, and just get feedback from your market. I remember it's a pure value game, so the more cold emails you send, the more quickly you test offers, lead magnets, scripts, angles, target markets, email structures, and all that stuff and so on and so forth. So eventually you will find something that sticks and resonates with your target market uh, pretty well. So if you need help to generate more qualified sales meetings and close more deals for your B2B business, we'll go below and we'll see if we can help. If I haven't convinced you yet, you can check out all of our case studies and results in this page right here. With that being said, I thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.